Welcome everyone to another episode of Brightside and day two of our adventure to the Jurassic Coast here in Dorset. Although technically we are staying in Devon, but we've just crossed the border into Dorset because we've returned to Lyme Regis for another day of adventurising. So let's go check it out. Another gorgeous day here in Lyme Regis today. Temperatures are going to get up to about the mid 70s. And we've parked in the same car park as we did yesterday. We knew where it was, it was simple. We could start on one end and basically work through the town, ending in the cob. We want to go to the museum today. Um, what else do we want to do? We want to go, we saw Mary Anning's statue yesterday, but we want to kind of document it a little bit better um, in this episode. And we also want to go to St Michael's Church, where her stained glass window is, and where she's actually buried. So that's part of our plan, and then we'll keep going over yonder, um, check out that beach area again, get an ice cream, and like I said, finish our day in the cob. Although actually, I say finish our day, we will actually come back this way, because the kids want to find some more fossils, because actually yesterday, they were very successful. A little bit backlit there, but we're in the Charmouth Road car park, and it's 114 steps from there, all the way up to the top. I like this sort of promenade area here. It's very different looking to the promenade that we're all used to in Penzance. But it's still very nice. I like it, and the view. The view is sensational. Shelley and I were talking about the difference in cliffs, um, and the fact that we're, you know, we're so used to like that hard granite down in Cornwall and it's just strange to see, or it's strange for us to see these cliffs which are no less beautiful, they are fantastic looking cliffs, the scenery here is lovely but uh, obviously a softer rock, I assume limestone, hence yeah. Lime Regis. That's my guess, I'm not a geologist but I assume it's all limestone. Are you excited to be back to the hometown, the hometown of your historical idol? Yes! Yeah! Gonna, what are we going to do? Going to go and see your statue? Go to the museum? Oh, it's a bit blowy, don't lose your hat. And so go to the museum, see her statue and the St Michael's Church. I'm cold. You've got <laughs> cold. I stated yesterday um, that Tilly was fascinated that Mary Anning herself, 200 years ago, would have walked across this breach, a, a, a beach, not breach. <laughs> um, obviously this uh, like promenade wouldn't have been there then. It would have been open beach, but um, yeah, Mary Anning would have walked along that. Here we have it. This is uh, Mary Anning's statue, which has been recently installed. I think only in the last sort of couple of years um, has it been put here. It's a really nice statue, actually. It states here Mary Anning, 1799 to 1847. And apparently, lots and lots, well, I say apparently, I can see them, um, but lots and lots of ammonites are sort of built into the um, statue itself. Apparently there's one in Trey's ear. So Trey, Trey is her little dog. And if you look into his ear, there's a little animate. Very cool. A little basket. And her hammer. Yeah. It's really nice. And then she looks out, so apparently she showed, so she lived, basically she lived where the museum is now. On the site of the museum is where she lived. And she would walk generally, I'm sure she walked the whole coast, but generally she walked out in this direction to find her fossils. So there we go, there is the statue of Mary Anning. Very cool. So let's just found a little hidden animite. I wonder if there's any hidden Mickeys on it. I doubt it. Yeah, good finding. I didn't see that one, Tilly. Uh, Tilly. That's awesome. <laughs> it's very tall. Maybe it's not quite life-size. Right, that's one of the things that Tilly wanted to do. The next stop is going to be the museum. Now, because we paid yesterday to do the fossil hunt tour with the museum, um, I believe we can get in for free today. Well, it's free, you know, as part of that ticket yesterday. So we just need to present that ticket and then we can uh, have a little look around the, the museum because we've prepaid. Okay, states here, Lyme Regis Museum, so we're gonna retrace our steps from yesterday and go back up here. 
and there's the museum. And like I said, it's the site of her former home. So the house was, uh, her house um, was demoed, oh, you know, like a long, long time ago. Apparently back in the day, so our guide was saying yesterday that before all of this area was built, the sea used to be a lot more uh, sort of closer to this area and her basement used to flood. Twice a day. Twice a day. At oh, with the tide. tide, that's right. So at high tide, her basement yeah, used to flood. Sea defences have been built at that point. No, no. So obviously this would probably be unrecognisable to Mary Anning now. But yeah, and I think this structure, the structure of the um, museum, I want to say they built it in 1902? Something, yeah. It's just over a century, like well over a century, 121 years old. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's head in. Yeah, it's a pity in some ways that Mary Anning's house isn't still here, but I'm sure it would have been demolished for good reason. I'm sure it was um, fallen to bits. But there is a little plaque up here on the wall. I did show it yesterday, but I will show it again today. Mary Anning, uh, uh, 1799 to 1847. The famous fossilist was born here in a house on the site of the Lyme Regis Museum. So here we go. The site was her home and her fossil shop until 1826. So she did move um, a little bit later in her life to another premises, but uh, certainly the area where she was born, which is awesome. Right, we've got to follow these dinosaur feet. States Museum there with a little arrow. There we go. So there's uh, quite a lot here, according to the lady, which is um, good. Obviously not going to show every single exhibit. That would be ridiculous. But uh, I will just cast the camera around um, some of the little bits, point out some of the major bits that... Uh, oh, oh. 14th century wooden window tracery from the medieval chapel on Buddle Bridge found during the demolition of 1913. See the display board on the left for more information. All right, I will do. Got some garments here, yeah, I'm sure they're replica garments. Um, kind of like the style that Mary Anning would have worn. Obviously the history of Lyme Regis stretches back uh, a lot um, earlier than uh, Mary Anning. And to prove that, here are some Roman artefacts, some Roman oil lamps, that's amazing, and pieces from a mosaic lining to a bath. How awesome is that? What's that? HMS Snap. Model of HMS Snap. I like that name. Amazing. It says Brass Ship's Bell. Can't see quickly where it came from. So this stuff here. Yeah. Um, so yesterday our tour guide told us that um, the cliffs above the beach that we were on used to have a rubbish tip on it. Mm. And these are all things that have been found on the beach that have like fallen out of the rubbish tip. That's right. So it's like a looks like a clay pipe there, obviously various uh, sort of like pottery items and stuff like that. Glassware. Yeah, there's a medal there, look, right, uh, right in the centre of the frame. So back to this ship, HMS Snap. It said this gun brig was built in Lyme in 1812 by the Cobb shipbuilder Samuel Bussell. So there we go, so that's a locally built ship. It's a very old, like, fire engine. It's amazing. This display is titled Shipwreck and Rescue. So obviously lots of artifacts that have been found on shipwrecks, lots of clay pipes there. Shelley was uh, fascinated by that little cute brush, wondering if it was like some sort of moustache brush or something. I don't know, maybe. A wooden last for a woman's shoe. Imagine finding something that big on the beach, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Right. Up the stairs. Following the dinosaur feet. Alright, now some of the cases I'm not allowed to film in, um, so I'll, I'll see what I can film and what I can't, basically. This is the replica the ichthyosaurus that Mary's brother Joseph found in 1811. Apparently she found the rest of the skeleton, but he found the skull. Like I said, this is a replica of it, but um, what an amazing find. 
AJ like barging past. <laughs> right, there's nothing here that states I can't film. Um, so yeah, just lots of the fossils found over time here. Part of a plant root system. It's quite amazing, isn't it? Looks to be like an incomplete skeleton of an ichthyosaur. Very cool. A model of Mary Alling's house that used to be here. So yeah, this was all very, very wet. Um, the tide used to come in and flood the uh, basement. But yeah, that's what her, the front of her house looked like. There is Mary Anning. Hey, Adrian, we are still. Right. States here a court suit, 1795 to 1805. What do you guys think? Do you think that that would suit me? Brilliant. Okay, apparently we're heading up more stairs. All right then. Which way, AJ? Which way do you want to go? That way, okay. It says here the nameplate from the Southern Railway West Country class steam locomotive that was called Lime Rages. The locomotive was built in 1945 and scrapped in 1967. Oh, you say kept that as well. Let's go down here. Don't look down. Yeah. Oh, it's quite a strange shaped museum, isn't it? It's quite um, kind of all over the place. <laughs> Sticks here, Borough Records Fund. The old Shambles Bell of 1647 it was hung here in October 1926. That's a very old bell. Amazing. I think you kind of need a little bit of a head for heights, actually. It's, like I said, it's quite a unique shaped building, isn't it? That um, you kind of, it's like, yeah. It's like an ammonite shape. It's got, like a, it's got like a small footprint, but it's quite a high, a high up um, sort of building. Right, so we didn't move fully in this direction earlier on. Another little vest there, or waist jacket, waistcoat. I think that would suit me. It's amazing. Doll from the Regency period, 1811 to 1820. That's amazing to think that maybe a child all those years ago played with that. Creepy doll alert. And here's the beautiful view from this little room. Nice. Right, all done in that fabulous little museum. We're now going to go and find St Michael's Church where Mary Anning is, and the stained glass window that's dedicated to her. So we're going to go and find that. Okay, and just like that, we found it. Well, we assume. It's uh, kind of roughly where we thought it would be. So this is Mary Anning's... Uh, not Mary Anning's, she's just here. This is uh, St Michael's Church. As of a recording of this, it's a Sunday, um, and, uh, you know, it's just gone 11 o'clock, so sort of prime time for a service, so we don't want to interrupt uh, in there, but uh, let's just continue around this way. That's just Annie! <laughs> no, look, right, just, be, just, just be quiet and respectful today. Okay. So there we go. Sacred to the memory of Joseph Anning, that's her brother, who died July the 5th, 1849, aged 53 years. Also of three children who died in their infancy. Also of Mary Anning, Sister of the above, who died March 9th, oh, it's my birthday, 1847. I wasn't born in 1847, though. Age 47 years old. So there it is, we did it. That looks very pretty. A little bit shadowed out there. There we go. I think Tilly has done a good job there. Right now, there's a stained glass window 
that the um, I don't know the archaeological not archaeological but the the fossil men of the day commissioned for her the geographic society something like that and it's on I believe to be here somewhere. Exactly no. Maybe it's that one I'm looking at. Right. Can't really see it on the screen of my phone there, but we don't think that that one is it. So actually, maybe it's on the other side. We can walk around a little bit. We can um, we can find it. So it doesn't appear to be any of these either. So we might have missed it. We'll go around the other side a minute. I suppose it might make sense that it is on the side of her burial, so it might actually be on the other side of the church, and we missed it first time round. Here we go, so this window is the one that matches the pictures on the internet. So we believe that this one is the stained glass window that was paid for by the, uh, what were they called? The, the, ge the, the Geological Society. The Geological Society. I said fossil people a minute, or oh. fossil men a minute ago, because so, I couldn't although think. although she wasn't allowed to join because she was a woman. Yes, dun, a dun, woman. Dun. Um, they did recognise her contributions to paleontology and geology yeah. at the time because paleontology wasn't its own yeah. thing. Um, so they paid for a stained right. glass window. Yeah. So that is, so that we believe, we're 99% sure. Well, no, I mean, if, if, yeah. as long as the picture's correct on the internet, then that is definitely the stained glass window that was commissioned for Mary Anning. And she is right there. All right, we did it. I think because we're not far off of lunchtime now, what we might do is just grab a coffee somewhere. Um, but I know there's a Costa in town, so we'll see. I won't particularly film that. Um, but uh, I think that's our plan. And then we'll head down toward the, uh, I assume the beach, is it, are we going like toward the beach area now, look along that front in the direction of the cob? Yeah. I think that's kind of like the plan, isn't it? Get a drink somewhere. Yeah, all right, let's do that. I know we're in early summer, but a uh, very, very busy road. Then uh, you do definitely have to um, hold on to your kids' hands, that's for sure, because uh, the pavements are quite narrow, the street itself is quite narrow. So just, uh, just a little word of advice, just be a bit cautious around the streets of Lyme Regis. Again, particularly in the summer months. Very busy. Loving that awesome door knocker. That's amazing. Look at that. <laughs> I think that would suit my house. Sign states there. The theatre. We come round here, like Bridge Street, heading back towards the museum in the direction of the museum. Um, there's the museum there, and then the main street goes up that hill, uh, where we're going to find that Costa Coffee. Lovely river down there, hence the name Bridge Street, I assume, because standing on a bridge. Right, it's quite a steep main street here, but some lovely old houses. The uh, beach area over there, down in that direction. Look, sea salt Cornwall. Liking these red brick buildings. We don't get many red brick buildings in Cornwall, um, but that's Salt Rock. That's where we bought AJ and Matilda's trucker style caps yesterday because the sun was quite intense, so we uh, we forgot their caps. So. We, uh, we bought them some in there, but uh, what a lovely main street. The Cornish Bakery, man, we are everywhere. Right, we're all done with our drink. We're going to head back down now to the front, down to the sort of beach area, and walk in the direction of the Cobb. Lovely view, just looking down uh, the street toward the front there. Lovely cannon there. Look at that cannon, that's amazing. A bit of info here, it says the Cobb Gate, a real gate once stood near this place through which all Cobb goods had to pass for customs assessment. Very cool. And just to the left of it here is a overall sort of map of uh, Lyme Regis 
to Broad Street. That's where we had our coffee and we're walking now towards this cart road. All right. Front beach. So I think that's more of a... I think where we were yesterday is like a rocky beach and then it's more of a sandy beach there over by the Cobb. Basically what we're doing is walking in that direction. Another plaque here that says the 16th Infantry Regiment of the United States Army was based here in World War II from November 1943 to May 1944. Awesome. And here we are, we've made it back down to this area now. So we're going to walk along here. Um, there's the Cobb out in that direction. So we're just going to see what we can see. Still very warm. And I do like their street signs here. Not their street signs, their light lamps here. Um, so they're shaped like little ammonites. Very cool. My goodness, it's very crowded along here. Some lovely beachfront properties here. I wonder how much they're worth. Quite a bit, I would imagine. A little bit more than uh, what I can afford. But, uh, you know, what a lovely view. Don't know if you guys have noticed, but Shelley and AJ have got, like, the same material for their clothes. So Shelley's got, like, this dinosaur dress. AJ's got the same pattern in, like, a t-shirt format. And Matilda's got another dress. Dinosaurs all over it. I wore my Jurassic Park t-shirt yesterday, so I'm the odd one out today. Loving these old buildings here. That one's even thatched. And that one looks amazing. Lovely old uh, buildings. And yeah, that beach down there, absolutely packed. Not so struck on that modern architecture there. I much prefer these older houses for sure. That's not quite so attractive. And you know, this, uh, with all respect, this building is a bit of a mess. I think so, in terms of, you know, architecture, when you compare it to the old buildings, this is not particularly attractive. Just notice the roofs of all these little huts, these like individual beach huts, possibly for sale, I don't know, or you can buy them or own them or whatever. Probably, uh, maybe rent them, I don't know, but probably if you were to buy one, they're probably about 100 grand each or something ridiculous. And that, in my opinion, ugly building, appears to be a, like a water sports shop. This is quite a nice building. It's um, like barred off of this, like, these like construction fences at the minute, but it does say out there there's a clock there. It said, what's that say? This clock was erected by public subscription to the memory of those associated with this town who laid down their lives in the 1939 to 1945 war. So obviously there to commemorate the people who lost their lives in World War II. Okay, I had to do a quick battery change on the camera. Now I've lost Shelley and the kids. I know which general direction they're heading in, so I'm sure we'll, uh, I'm sure I'll spot them in, in, in a minute. But um, let's just keep heading down this way, see what I can find, and uh, try and find Shelley and the kids. There's an amusement arcade with the usual sort of stuff in. And this here, just uh, just going to stop here by these dumpster-style bins. The beach is very different here. You've got the rocky half of the beach there, and then you've got that wall that goes down, and then this half is sandy. Huh. States here you can hire a deck chair. Um, I don't think there's much realty left on that beach. It's very crowded. Okay, still haven't found Shelley and the kids. I might have to ring them in a minute. Hey! Are you alright? Yeah, we thought we'd sit here and wait for you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I, um, I, I was just saying to the camera, I had to do a quick uh, battery change and I got stuck behind uh, like a vehicle with rubbish bins on and everything, so um, well, that's okay. I found you. That's the main thing. Okay, Shelley and I are just sitting on this little wall here because um, Tilly and AJ have found some nice little sand. A little small amount of realty on that beach that they can um, sit on. Don't, don't go throwing stones, Tilly. <laughs> But um, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just going to plonk here for 20 minutes and then we'll carry on out to the cob. Right. So at the far end of this area, we enter this little street. You can't. Looks like you can go around that way, around the front of those buildings. But we're going to go around uh, through. The, uh, we're going to go through this street because it looks a lot less crowded. There's like, I mean, there's literally well thousands of people here, which is understandable. It's a beautiful day. It's a bank holiday uh, as of the recording of this. So, what have we got here? We've got, like, Jane's Cafe and Takeaway. 
looks like pizza. In fact, it doesn't look open at the minute. Authentic wood-fired pizza, nice. But, uh, ooh, so you see the captain's house. It's a property code there. Oh, it's for uh, like a holiday let, okay. Royal Standard, so obviously a public house. Very nice. It's like an old building. Yeah, just a nice little street. Like I said, I said in yesterday's videos, I do get a lot of like St. Ives vibes in this place. Very similar. A little gift store here that says Old Bonded Store Emporium. A big building. There's this cafe there as well at the end. There's certainly lots of places to um, eat and drink here, as you would expect. Another pub here on the end. It's just the Cobb Arms. Nice little garden there. Okay, you'll have to forgive my ignorance as a tourist, but I assume now we are heading down to the Cobb. I assume this is all the Cobb, but this is certainly the harbour. I know that much. Lovely, um, lovely view. Again, you've got all that lovely, all those lovely cliffs over there. These boats here. I don't know if they're like fishing boats or whether they're just like, um, you know, like people's own sort of boats, look like people's own little boats that they just go out. Maybe an old fishing boat here, I don't know. But it's very, very nice. But yeah, definitely got some St. Ives vibes there. Please don't feed me. I'm sure that's actually not what he thinks and says. He's actually saying, please feed me. But uh, I think maybe perhaps a human has written that on behalf of the seagull because, you know, they like to be fed. Just notice these like old wooden they look wooden, these old wooden posts there on this little beachy area inside the harbour. And of course, you know, the usual sort of trash that ends up uh, in these sorts of places. But uh, yeah, look at those. Very cool. We're going to work our way around in that direction, get to the end of the pier, and then probably then walk all the way back, back to the car. Um, but we will just stop by. We will just stop by that, I think it's called the East Beach, where the kids found uh, all of those fossils yesterday. The kids just want to pop back there for 10 minutes, so yeah. I comment a few times about I wish there was such a thing as smell-o-vision, but oh, it really smells lovely, that sort of uh, seaweedy sea smell, you know what I mean. Looks like there's a marine aquarium here. We haven't got time to go in there today, but uh, maybe we'll come back. I think we'll probably end up coming back to Lyme Regis, yeah, don't you think? It's lovely, yeah. It is lovely, yeah. Just to the right of the aquarium here. The pier continues out. So let's get to uh, the, oh, a little beach. So some people are congregating down there on the sand. Um, can't get all the way out because we've got these um, uh, these like fences here to stop us going all the way out. But we can still get a beautiful view from this point. States are closed beyond this point. Oh, following storm damage. Okay, so the high wall will remain closed until further notice. Okay, so we must have suffered some storm damage here recently, but um, but here we are. This is the view we have as far as we can go. What a beautiful little, I, I assume a little bay. Beautiful little bay here. And then that's looking back, that's looking back in towards Lyme Regis. And right there in the center of frame, is the tower belonging to St Michael's Church where we were earlier on, where Mary Anning was laid to rest. Lots of people there I passed by were eating fish and chips, like takeout fish and chips. They look real good. Just back now um, on the sort of um, near side area of the harbour. I'm just going to clamber up these steps and get a view out that way, uh, on the other side of that harbour wall. Lots of boats parked here. Shelley always calls it a boat park, um, as opposed to a car park. I like that, boat park. Um, a lot more rocky on this side. So here's the thing. So the bulk of that beach is rock. Then you get to a little wall, a little dividing wall. And from that point on, it's really, really fine sand. Then on this side of the harbour, 
you're back to rock. So here's the question, I might be wrong. I, run, I wonder if that sand has been shipped in to make it more of a beach, do you know what I mean? Um, if you guys know, let me know in the comments because um, I want to know. But that would be my guess, I would say, I would say that that sand is shipped in because it's just obviously so different to the rest of the coastline. But here's the view. So Seaton, where we're staying, would be down there. We're literally just in Dorset. So, I don't know, quarter of a mile, mile, something like that, not very far, is Devon. So I would say that that peninsula was still Dorset, I assume. Um, but beyond that would be Devon. But yeah. Beautiful view. Less crowded here, for sure, but then obviously we haven't got the um, sand on the beach. But people who were um, willing to put up with sitting on hard stones, they'll get a much quieter beach experience, I suppose. But I did read a signpost, apparently there's no lifeguards here. Right, let's head back across the uh, seafront there. We're going to head all the way over to the east side of the town um, to that other beach where Matilda and AJ want to look for a few more fossils. Um, that's the plan anyway. And I think we'll close out the video over there. Um, there's obviously lots more here in Lyme Regis to see. We're not going to have time to see everything. I'm sure we'll probably come back. Um, the kids have enjoyed it. Obviously helped by the amazing weather. Um, this uh, bank holiday weekend, again as of a recording of this. But yeah. Yeah, really impressive this place, really nice. Yeah, we will... We will return. At some point, no idea when. Hmm. I have no idea where Shelley and the kids are. Okay, we'll just, um... We'll just carry on along the seafront. I'm sure we'll find them again. And the kids wanted to uh, get into this uh, vehicle contraption uh, at the arcade. So, you know, they're in there for two minutes, but ultimately we're on our way over to that east beach. A little bit more of a breeze has kicked up in the last couple of hours, so I would say the air temperature is as warm as it was yesterday, but it's a cooler day in the fact that it is more breezy. And by the way, we're just passing by the Mary Anning statue again on our way through uh, over to the East Beach. We will just see how accessible um, that beach is over there because the tide has come in. Um, and obviously not being familiar with the coastline, we just want to check it out before we um, obviously head on down there. So we'll head to the end of this um, like promenade and um, we'll see how much the sea has come in onto East Beach. Okay, the beach down there was accessible, but um, Matilda and AJ changed their mind. They didn't really want to go down there again and search for more fossils. So we're going to leave the video there. As always, thank you for watching. It is most appreciated. Don't forget to do all the usual YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, smash the bell, and you'll never miss it on any video that we put up on YouTube. Oh, just got hit by, a, hit by a bush there. We're on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at the Bright Side. So check us out there. So from us to you, cheers and gone. Oh my goodness. 114 steps. And we made it back to the car park. It was not cheap to park here, so be aware of that. Like any of these touristy towns, if you plan to drive, beware of the parking fees. <laughs>